My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. So, episode number 18 of the 120 days in physics with Flash Isaac. In the last episode, I introduced the electric cells. I analyzed the disparity between the cell and the batteries and as well their similarities. Then I went further to explain that cells have positive and negative terminal and they can be categorized into primary and secondary cells. Then I gave the differences comparison between primary and secondary cells and I promised to give you or to compare all the primary or the primary and the secondary cells. Of course, I am going to do all that. But this episode, let's face simple voltaic cells. Then the next episode, we'll look at the primary and secondary cells. This class is supposed to focus on that. But I need to make you understand what this is about. When you hear primary cells and you hear secondary cells, they can both be under simple voltaic cells. What am I trying to say? The primary cells I've explained to you so far and the secondary cells, they can also be termed simple voltaic cells. Why? A simple voltaic cell can either be primary or secondary. If it is dry and cannot be recharged and the process or the, the current produced is based on an irre irreversible process, you say it is primary like we analyzed. And if it is wet, rechargeable, has lower internal resistance and other features of secondary cells, then that simple voltaic cell is a secondary cell. This begs the question, what is a simple voltaic cell. A simple voltaic cell is simply a cell made up of two metal electrodes submerged in an ion solution. A simple voltaic cell is made up of two metal electrodes submerged in an ion solution. Electrodes. Ion solution. If you are a very smart student or you easily remember hearing that a simple voltaic cell is made up of metal electrodes and these electrodes are submerged in ion solution, electrolysis simply comes to your mind. Something like this two metal electrodes submerged in ion solution. It's as simple as that, which means for simple voltaic cell, we have the electrodes, cathode and anode, and we have the electrolytes. So, this is the shortcut to remember the electrodes and the ions, that is electrolytes, used in simple voltaic cell. Just say, causing some. If you can remember causing some, then you know the electrodes and the electrolytes used in simple voltaic cell. Look at it, causing. The cathode is copper. Cathode is copper rod or copper electrode. Zinc is the anode. So anode, anode is zinc. And sun is the electrolyte H2SO4. So the electrolyte is H2SO4. Question Which of these electrolytes is generally used in simple voltaic cell? It is H2SO4, tetra oxysulfate 6. Now, what is the cathode? Copper cathode or copper rod? Anode, zinc. 
so causing some so this will basically give you the overview of a simple voltaic cell for electric cells or electrochemical um electrochemistry the cathode is the positive electrode and the anode is the negative electrode which means here can be copper here is zinc and here is the solution h2 so4 then this can be connected to a direct current source or a meter or galvanometer or whatever this is a simple structure mind you simple voltaic cell or voltaic cell is also called galvanic cells and you can have a situation where a different cathode or anode is used it's not compulsory that it must be like this but this is just for the simple sake in some cases you can even have different uh, compartment of the electrolyte or different compartment like this and there will be salt bridge here salt bridge so the salt bridge will have to connect the electrolyte in the cathode and the one in the anode so there are a lot of things under this but these are what you are expected to know when it comes to simple voltaic cells and one issue with simple voltaic cells is that they have two major defects so there are two major defects in simple voltaic cells the first one is polarization and the second one is local action so if you are asked what are the defects in simple voltaic cell you simply see the defects are polarization and local action now what is polarization and what is local action this is what i shall now analyze polarization polarization is a defect of the simple voltaic cells now it is the formation of bubbles of hydrogen you know bubbles or maybe you are washing and you shake the uh, the water with detergent inside you see that bubble form so now polarization is when hydrogen bubbles are formed in the anode of the voltaic cell now when that is formed these bubbles will insulate the electrodes making them not to conduct and as such it will slow down the working of the cell or it can stop the working of the cell so polarization is a defect of the simple voltaic cell and what is polarization it is the phenomenon where hydrogen bubbles are released or formed at the electrodes like the anode of the voltaic cell now when that bubble is formed it will insulate the electrodes it will insulate the electrodes and when the electrodes are insulated of course the working of the cell will slow down and it will eventually stop the working of the cell and sometimes you've even seen some battery you see bubbles or liquid or bubbles coming out of your battery mostly remote batteries and other big batteries that should be one of the effects of the simple voltaic cell now polarization or when polarization begins to happen in voltaic cell these are the effects one it will increase the resistance of the cell resistance is the opposition to the flow of current in an electric circuit circuit is a pathway through which current flows if the circuit is closed current will flow through if it is open then there will not be flow of current now the effects of polarization in voltaic cell are one it will increase the resistance of the cell and it also reduces the amount of current and it can even slow down and eventually stop the working of the cell it will insulate the electrodes all these are basically the effects and how do we prevent polarization in simple voltaic cells the first way is to brush the electrodes properly you need to make sure they are brushed and secondly 
you add an oxidizing agent to the electrode that can be affected. Oxidizing agents, they are substances or chemicals that can add oxygen to the system or remove hydrogen. Remember, in terms of hydrogen and oxygen, uh, oxidation is the addition of hydrogen. No, oxidation is the addition of oxygen and the removal of hydrogen. Now, the oxidizing agent you can be magnesium oxide. So, in simple voltaic cell, the common oxidizing agent used is magnesium oxide. Now, when you add oxidizing agent to a simple voltaic cell to prevent polarization, we say that you are depolarizing the cell. Depolarizing. Therefore, the oxidizing agent added in voltaic cell to prevent polarization are called depolarizers. Which means the depolarizer used to prevent polarization in simple voltaic cell is magnesium oxide. As we look at other cells, secondary cells and primary cells, you see that they have uh, the various depolarizers used to prevent polarization. And the depolarizer, what do they do? For the case of simple voltaic cell, these hydrogen that are produced, it will oxidize them to water. It will send oxygen to the hydrogen take. So when the oxygen reacts with the hydrogen, water is formed. As such, these hydrogen bubbles will be eliminated. So that is it for one of the defects of simple voltaic cell, which is polarization. How about local action? Local action. Local action is another defect of the simple voltaic cell. Just like polarization is also a defect. We we'll discuss polarization. What is local action as a defect of the simple voltaic cell? Local action is a phenomenon that occurred in simple voltaic cell when pure zinc is not used. When you use a dirty zinc in simple voltaic cell, there is a chance that polarization, no, there is a chance that local action will occur. I think zinc is basically the anode causing some. Now, when you use a dirty zinc in simple voltaic cell, the impurities, the dirty in the zinc will result in gradual wearing away of the zinc plate. They begin to scratch, to wear, to fade. As such, we say that, oh no, this is a local action. And when your electrode begins to wear away, that is a big problem. So, local action. This occurs when pure zinc is not used. The impurities in the zinc will now result in gradual wear away of the zinc plate. And how do we present this? Uh, prevent this? First of all, we said that it occurs when pure zinc is not used. So the first way to prevent local action is to use a pure zinc or a clean zinc. How about a situation where you cannot afford or get a clean zinc? How do you also prevent local action? If you have a dirty zinc or you don't have a pure zinc, or even with pure zinc, to prevent any likely, likelihood of local action, Clean the zinc you are using with H2SO4. After cleaning the zinc with H2SO4, rub it with mercury. Mercury will amalgamate the zinc to form the amalgam. But the result, use a clean or pure zinc to prevent local action or clean the zinc you are using very well with H2SO4. After doing that, rub it with mercury. Your problem is solved. <laughs> With this, we come to the end of this episode. And I'm sure you find this or you found this interesting. Get your flash learner applications and begin to practice other questions and notes. 
reach out to me if you have anything to tell me or anything to give me. I am available. I am not unavailable. See you in the next episode.